Welcome back to the Buckeye Show here on 97.1 The Fan. We are all jazzed up this week because it is March Madness. We got the Buckeyes going on to the Sweet 16 to take on Arizona this week. But the women are playing too, and we had games in Columbus over the weekend. Swin Cash, she plays for the Chicago Sky of the WNBA. She's a two-time national champion for Gino Oriema's UConn Huskies, also a two-time gold medalist. She was here in Columbus this weekend covering all the action for the women's tournament for ESPN. Swin, thanks so much for giving us some time tonight. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, you got it. I mean, uh, the Unfortunately, the Buckeyes weren't playing. And I wanted to start off with this for for, uh, for folks that don't know about how the, the women's tournament is seeded and everything. You're going to have a you're going to have one of the four one seeds later tonight in a late game. Notre Dame taking on Iowa. Iowa is the nine seed in the Norfolk region, but it gets to play at home. Just explain how much of a headache this is for the women's tournament for the selection committee to try and properly seed teams and also get them playing in a in a fair site. Uh, it's very difficult for the committee to really, um, you know, place the seedings. Um, but teams understand going in. That's why you play the regular season because you're vying to try to get the highest position. Um, and the seed, but at the same time, because the regions and everything's already set, you have the possibility of playing at least one of the teams being at home. So Iowa will have a hostile crowd there today, but I'm sure you know Notre Dame's used to going into environments like that. Did you ever have that situation when you were at UConn, where you had to play a, a road game in one of those first couple rounds because of scheduling conflict or something? Uh, no, it was a little different Different back when I played. Um, usually, you know, the team that had a higher seat at the first round, the second round at home. So it's, it's changed a little bit, which I think has um, made it a little bit better. But there's things that we can continue to do as we grow the women's game. Well, as I said, uh, you, you played for, for Gino, for Coach Oriema. He's won seven national titles. You were a part of two of them. What, what makes him tick? Why is he so successful? Uh, he's very competitive, and he demands perfection, even though we all know that that is impossible. And I think the time and the work ethic that he puts in to try to help the girls compete and understand that, you know, every year the goal is a national championship, and that's a lot of pressure, but that's also the reason why you go to the University of Connecticut. Swin Cash is with us here on the Buckeye Show. She's on the Subway Fresh Take Hotline. How long do you think it's going to be before a woman is coaching – the men, a woman coaching in the men's game? Um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know if any women is, is, is aspire to, to do that. Um, you know, you always get that question of when's the next, you know, when's a woman going to play in the NBA? When's a woman going to do this? And it, you know, it just becomes very daunting because I feel like people are always asking that question of when women are going to break through into the men's sport when, um, to be honest with you, I don't know if there's many women that aspire to do that. If they are, then great. Hopefully they'll get done one day. But I think we do just enjoy, you know, the game of women's basketball continue to grow with. It's it's a little interesting, don't you think, that I, I don't know if, you're, if you've ever heard his comments, but Bobby Knight, he has always had such high praise for Pat Summit, and he he has uh, gone so far to say she's she's not just the greatest women's coach. He believes she's the best coach, basketball coach, that he's he's ever known. And this is a guy who – brought up Coach K. I mean, that's that's really saying something, isn't it? Yeah, it's saying a lot because um, it's not just about, you know, coaching the game of basketball. It's how do you, you know, some of the greatest coaches are able to tap into their players and, and take them to a high level and develop them over the course of certain years, especially in college. And you look at Pat Summit, the players that have come out of her program are well-rounded. They've developed as players. And so that's why a lot of people have a, a great amount of respect and, and, and praise for her. Um, and you look at Coach K, Coach Oriyama, I mean, Bobby Knight, all of these different coaches have had the ability to transform teams, even when they didn't have the most talent, to play at a really high level. And that's the, that's the key to having a, a great coach. All right, Swin, you had a little project here recently. You wrote this book, A Humble Journey, More Precious Than Gold. It talks about your journey just throughout your basketball life, and that includes your, your two gold medals for Team USA. What... I guess what inspired you, what sparked you to, to put your, your journey onto pages? Well, in 2008, I didn't make the Olympic team, and throughout the next four years, it was really a process of learning a lot of life lessons, growing as a basketball player, developing, but also um, 
grown as a woman, and I thought that a lot of kids, a lot of people look at me as a role model, and I'm always going out and talking to people, and I felt that I wanted to put into words what it was like for me so that people can be inspired. And this book isn't my whole life story, but it is a glimpse into my journey and what I learned over the last four years and how to get back to the podium and win gold in London. Well, you've been you've been to a lot of high levels as far as your basketball career can go. I mean, you, you've been to the highest. You, you've made the WNBA. You've won national championships at the college level. You've won gold medals for, for Team USA. What, if you had to, I, I guess it would be hard to choose, but, I mean, so many people love March Madness and watching the tournament, but, you know, winning a gold medal for, for your country, that's got to be huge. Is it tough to... If I could tell you, you only w- would be able to achieve one of those goals. Uh, what would, don't what would you, yeah, I, I know, I know. <laughs> but I would, I would think the answer is easy. I, for me, I think I would say the Olympics. I, I would say hands down, country. Um, yeah, that. I mean the Olympics is at the pinnacle of of um, you know someone's career. If you reach that level and, and win an Olympic gold, not only for like your school and sometimes you play for university for your club. Um, overseas, the NBA team, but this is playing for the whole United States of America, and um, that's very, very special, and it means something to me. Um, but you know, out there in the Buckeye State, I mean, in college, <laughs> yeah. it's just this whole, you know, reverence for your university and winning championships is what it's all about. So I had some wonderful times playing, and I'm loving March Madness right now. So many great memories happening, magic, upsets. I mean, my bracket's pretty much done, but you know, I won't talk about that. <laughs> that was a good choice, though. You can't go wrong with America for for the the stars and stripes let me ask you where where do you keep your gold medals you got two of them where are they uh, yeah i know at home and then you know i usually go back and just put them in a safe but i've had a little bit of a tour and my mom wanted to see them and stuff like that so right now they're at home with me but don't try to go to my house because they're not going to be there long anybody that's listening <laughs> no no do you ever do you ever just wear them i mean just you know lounging no, around in your sweatpants no, in the no. morning just wear the gold medal <laughs> No, maybe my niece or nephews, but not not me. <laughs> hey, uh, Swin, who's going to win this thing this year? Who do you like? I mean, Baylor, Notre Dame, a lot of a lot of good teams in the women's game right now. Oh man, you know what? Baylor's they're very tough right now. It's going to take, I think, someone playing their A game to really knock them off. But I mean, you look at Notre Dame. You look at uh, Stanford beat Baylor early on in the season. You look at um, Connecticut. I mean, they have the tools, but you have to put a perfect game together or close to perfect, I would say, to, to beat Baylor. And I, and I think some of those teams that I named, um, they have a possibility. You know, it's one of those things where it's more madness. It's one and done. So all you need to do is beat them once. Swin Cash plays for the Chicago Sky of the WNBA, two-time gold medalist. Her book, Humble Journey, More Precious Than Gold, uh, probably one of the most awesome names I've ever heard. You didn't need a nickname growing up, did you? Because your name was just cool enough as is. So you know what, Swint is my nickname. Yeah, but actually. it's the first. Um, but it's the first four <laughs> letters of your first name. So really, it's. I mean, it's your name. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Swin, thanks. I mean, I've been called Swin sometimes and stuff like that. So at least I'm not being called a bike. I like Swin better. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Swin better than Schwin for sure. Hey, thanks, <laughs> thanks so much for the time. We appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much. Guys, have a great day.